Hello and welcome to the Leaky Gut Masterclass. My name is Billy, I'm the owner and the founder of the Health Potion Academy and this is an introductory class that I've created to help clear up some of the confusion and misunderstanding around uh, this topic known as leaky gut. So more officially this condition is known as gastrointestinal hyperpermeability. You hear leaky gut and it sounds like it's not really a serious thing. It doesn't you don't you don't take it so seriously. So if we look at it from the the technical definition, gastrointestinal hyperpermeability, we're gonna take we're gonna break that word apart and take a look into that. And I hope you're doing well, but the chances are you're struggling with something on this list. This isn't an exhaustive list, so I'm that there are I'm sure that there's there's some of you watching that that don't have anything on this list, but you have something else instead, and it can be connected to leaky gut. So as you see, we've got arthritis, autoimmune conditions, depression, skin rashes, asthma, psoriasis, anxiety, adrenal fatigue. All of these things can be connected to gastrointestinal hyperpermeability. So let's first of all, let's break that word down and help you understand exactly what it means. So gastrointestinal basically means sort of your digestive system. So we know that this is a problem that's located in the digestive tract. Hyper, so high ER means increased or elevated. So you see this in things like hyper thyroid. It means the thyroid is overfunctioning. So hyper means increased or higher levels of. Permeability is, is a concept where we're, we're talking about how porous something is. So we've got I've got a I've got a little a diagram for you here. So this is this is what a healthy gut should look like on this left side here. You see, the barrier is very strong and it's not permeable. It's got very, very tiny holes, and I know it's a little bit difficult to see on this camera, but there's little there's little green dots here. And these little green dots are fully digested molecules of food. So these are monosaccharide sugars, these are um, fat molecules that have been emulsified, and then they've been digested with enzymes. And this is um, proteins that have been broken down into individual amino acids. So they're in their smallest, smallest baby molecules that they can, that they can be. And this is what food has to be broken down to before we can absorb it and actually use it in our body. So everything you put in your mouth is broken down to its single tiniest little, little, little division of, that it can be, its smallest, its smallest form. And then the, the gut absorbs it once it's fully broken down. But when we've got increased permeability, as you can see here, we've got a hole in the gut here, and we could just make, make one here. So you see there's now a hole, which means these purple dots, which represent food that hasn't been fully broken down. So this could be because you've got weak stomach acid and you can't break all of your proteins down into amino acids, or maybe you're not producing enough digestive enzymes, so you can't break these foods down quickly enough. There's there's a couple of problems that, that can go wrong that cause this to occur, and we'll cover this over here in, a, in just a second. But what's happening is these molecules are now able to leak through this into your bloodstream. And this is this is not supposed to happen. This is this is never really supposed to happen. This does happen on an acute basis. So this this in, this permeability is is something that fluctuates from day to day. And this, this is really important because once you wrap your head around this concept of permeability being variable and how it changes, you won't be identified with having, with having leaky gut. You'll, you'll be able to see that your permeability of your intestine increases and decreases. It literally is changing every single second. If you eat a food that you're allergic to, you're sensitive to, your permeability will increase. If you do something stressful, your permeability will increase. I can tell you extremely stressful events. So say you get a phone call and they say one of your family has died. Immediately, that, tri that triggers a stress response in your body. Your permeability goes up, just like that. So this is really tied to stress response. So it's, 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 it's variable. A really good example that I like to use, because this has, been, this has been studied and documented and they have numbers, is they tested the level of permeability in somebody's gut the day before and the day after they ran a marathon. So a marathon is an extremely physically stressful event for the body. It requires a lot of endurance. It's very taxing. It stresses the body out a lot. So they measured the permeability of their gut the day before the marathon and the day after the marathon. And they found that 
the, the change, the change in the level of permeability was so significant that they, they couldn't even really believe it. So they went from having a healthy level of permeability, so this is where they're able to just absorb the, the broken down pieces of food, so these little green dots, not very permeable at all, to having permeability levels of somebody with Crohn's and colitis. So this is an extremely, extremely inflammatory bowel disease. So at this point they've got um, ulcerations and they're usually having bloody stools and their digestive system is like visibly inflamed. And they reached those levels of permeability simply by running a marathon. So that gives you an idea that this is a this this fluctuates every single day based on stresses, based on the food that you eat. And it's really important to bear this in mind because by making the correct changes, you can reduce permeability in literally a couple of days. And that means all of the symptoms that are associated with this, this increased level of permeability can begin to settle down fairly much immediately, which is which is which is great news. So now I want to talk to you about how this little molecule, so this is the undigested piece of food that leaks in, so into the bloodstream, how it causes all of these different problems. So everybody's different, and a lot of this actually comes down to genetics. And the thing that you need to understand about genetics is, your, you can think about it like this analogy. So genetics loads the gun, but epigenetics pulls the trigger. So epigenetics being above your genetic level. So these are these are your environment. So this is the food that you're eating, the air that you're breathing, the thoughts that you're thinking, the composition of your microbiome. So all of these things we have control over, which is really, really great because say you've got a genetic predisposition to develop arthritis, then that's bad. If this molecule leaks through, it causes an arthritis response in the body. But if we can stop this coming through, this changes how your genetics express and the arthritis goes away, which is which is great. We all, we all want to be able to find relief from these symptoms. So now I'm going to show you what's actually occurring in the body. And I've taken two of these examples as like to, to go into extra detail. And we've got like a diagram here. So we're going to focus on autoimmunity, particularly autoimmune arthritis in this diagram. And we're going to focus on depression in the upper diagram. So what happens is, let me move back over here so you can see, this molecule, once it's leaked in, it stimulates an immune response from the body. And this is, this is very smart because when these molecules are leaking into the bloodstream, they're, they're not supposed to be there. They're foreign proteins, they're food that isn't broken down properly. These are even fragments or even living whole bacteria that, and funguses and viruses and yeasts and things that are living in your gut, they leak through this, this barrier. And we don't want to have these things in our blood. It's very, very dangerous. So the body triggers an immune reaction and attacks these things to try and get rid of them because they shouldn't be there. So the body, so this has leaked in and now the immune system is trying to attack this molecule. But the tricky thing is sometimes these molecules look very, very similar to parts of our own body. So say for example, you, you add some chicken and there's an, like a protein structure in the chicken that you ate that looks like, so in this example, we could say that looks like your brain. So in this case, you've got, you see these little, these little purple dots are proteins in your brain that look like this molecule that's leaked in. Your body mounts an immune response and begins to attack this molecule to get out of the bloodstream, which is smart. If your body didn't do this, you'd die. It's very important that it, that it does this. But unfortunately, this molecule also looks like some structures that are present in your brain. So now your immune system is attacking these structures in your brain as well. And if your own immune system is attacking and destroying your own brain, that sounds like a recipe for depression to me. I don't know about to you, but to me, that sounds like something you want to avoid at all costs. And this can be exemplified in other examples as well. So say we can use a different, a different example. Say you eat an almond and there's a protein structure in the almond that leaks through the gut like this, and it looks like this structure in your knee, in your knee joint or your ankle joint. Now your body is attacking this molecule because it's leaked in, so it's stimulating an immune response, but this immune response that's been triggered is now also attacking these joints in your leg. And now you've got autoimmune arthritis because your immune system is attacking these things and it looks like, in sort of like the standard medical model, it looks like the body is just stupid, it's attacking itself for no reason. But we have to understand, the body is smart and it's doing it to attack this molecule 
And these ones just look very similar. So as, as I was saying earlier, this is, everybody has different genetic predispositions and based on the composition of their microbiome and the foods that they're eating, they're gonna have different reactions. So the body's gonna look like it's attacking different things. But if we seal this gut lining, so like on this side, you see it's healthy. There's no holes, there's no inflammation. None of these purple molecules can leak through. The immune system doesn't mount a response, which means these um, molecules that look similar to this don't, there's no immune response here. So these stop being attacked, which means those symptoms just naturally go away by themselves. So you can see how this, this gut problem, this, this really is a problem that's centered in the gut is actually causing a lot of ill health over the, like throughout the rest of the body. And this is, this is just one aspect. This, this, um, this perspective on it is called molecular mimicry. So you're free to do your own research on that. It's very, very fascinating, especially when you dig into the, the more intricate parts of this. So say for example, instead of this being an undigested food protein, this is actually a protein that's produced by your own microflora, your own gut. At this point, it doesn't matter what you eat because you're not having a reaction to the food that you're eating. You're having a reaction to a fragment of the organisms that live inside your own gut, which means if this isn't sealed, these are gonna be leaking in and these symptoms will be persistent no matter what you eat. And this is, this is what I see a lot in my one-to-one -one, is people have these, these responses to their own microflora. And in these cases, you have to focus on sealing the gut lining. Some people, you can just remove this, remove this food that you don't digest well. This is like a food sensitivity model. Remove that food or focus on digesting it better so that it's fully broken down. And it doesn't matter because there's no purple molecules that can leak in anymore. But if it is the case where your own microflora is the cause of these reactions, there is no other option than to heal that gut lining. And ultimately, this is where we need to focus, is on, is on healing and resealing this gut lining so these molecules don't leak in anymore. And then all of these problems just, just go away by themselves. So how do we do that? Well, now I need to tell you about the five pillars. So the five pillars are, in essence, the, the five primary core functions of the gut. So the gut is the gut is vastly complex. There's signaling hormones. There's trillions of different organisms. There's that it is a very complex thing to understand. There's many intricacies. It's very nuanced. But what I've done is, in, over my experience, both like personally myself, like through healing my gut and working with my clients, I've come to realize that there's five primary functions that the gut has, and if one of these functions goes off you almost always have some kind of downstream problem and leaky gut almost always forms as a result. So these five primary functions are acid, enzymes, bile, motility, and mucosa. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about these so you can understand a little, about, a little bit about why they're so important, what their functions are, and why we get so many problems when they go wrong. So we start right at the top, acid. Acid is produced by your stomach, it's designed to basically liquefy all of your food. It's also the, it's the first step in digestion. So it, there's a lot of hormone stimulation that goes on here. Like if you don't reach a low enough stomach acidity, enzymes of bile, they don't, they don't get released. So this could be a huge problem for that reason. Secondly, as I said, this, this emulsification, this complete li this liquefaction of all of this food, if this doesn't occur, it's very hard for bile and enzymes to work on the, on the food because it's still solid. It's not broken down to really, really small pieces. So the enzymes and bile don't have as much surface area to interact. But it's also our first line of defense. If you've got really strong stomach acid, it's almost impossible to get things like food poisoning. It's, it kills a lot of organisms. And without it, you, you've lost your biggest and first line of defense. It's absolutely the first line of defense. So if you're missing that, you've got weakened immunity, you've got predisposition to things like SIBO or candida overgrowth. It's, it's really, really important. Enzymes are there. An enzyme is a catalyst. It's a catalytic protein. So this basically means it's, it's a molecule that your body uses to speed up other reactions. So it's almost always the case that you have a deficiency of enzymes if your food doesn't digest quickly enough, like tendencies towards constipation can often be linked to this. And especially if you have energy problems as well, because enzymes 
aren't just used in the digestive process. They're used in the liver. They're used, they're used all around the body for breaking down different things. And if we're, if we're in a deficit for energy, it's generally quite a good indication that enzymes aren't there to speed these reactions up. So we can get really stuck there. So supporting digestive enzymes particularly can, can really help not only with digestive symptoms, but with resolving fatigue problems as well. Bile. Bile is honestly probably my favorite pillar. I, I find it so fascinating because it's connected really intrinsically to the liver. So the liver plays a role in every single facet of your health. There isn't a single process that happens in your body that doesn't involve the liver. And the gateway to good liver health is to have good healthy bile. The bile is what you use to excrete used cholesterol, all of your old steroid and sex hormones, any fat soluble toxins, all of these things are processed in the bile. So if you don't have good bile flow, none of this is gonna be happening. But bile, and this is, this is where I think it's really interesting, bile actually works like soap. So I think you wash your hands with, with soap to get bacteria off them and to get, to get oil off. So if you don't have good bile, first of all, you're not gonna be able to absorb any of the, the fat that you eat or any of the fat soluble nutrients. So that's a huge problem because these are, Fat soluble nutrients are so important for resolving chronic gut problems. So we need to make sure bile is healthy for that reason. But as I said, they act like soap as well. So it moves all of these bacteria and viruses and fungus and stuff that's in the small intestine that we don't want to be here. It moves them down in the digestive system. So it's really important for that reason. And this ties in nicely with the motility. So many people think motility is just about whether you're constipated or you have diarrhea, but it's way more uh, intricate and um, nuanced than that. Your food doesn't just move down. Once you, once you, once food exits your stomach, it's actually sloshed around back and forth so that it has lots of surface area and opportunities to act with brush border enzymes and all of these different ways that the body exposes different areas of the digestive system to the food as it's being broken down so that it has the opportunity to absorb all of the nutrients. So if the motility isn't coordinated, it's not it's not moving everything around properly. It's not cleaning and cleansing itself. So that is the part where you move everything along in the digestive system. If it's not doing that, predispositions to overgrowth, nutrient malabsorptions. Um, if it's if it's over if it's overstimulated, you can get things like diarrhea, and then you're just completely losing all of your nutrients. And we eat so that we can nourish ourselves. And finally, we've got the mucosa. So the mucosa has a really intrinsic link with the microbiome. So Originally, the five pillars was just this, and I, include, I included the microbiome with the mucosa, but because this is so, is so important, I now consider it the foundation of the five pillars. So you can think of, think of a temple or some kind of, of building. It's got five pillars supporting it, but then you've got the foundation underneath, which is supporting all of the five pillars. So the mucosa is, is, is this, what we're talking about here, this, this lining. So if the lining is damaged, first of all, you're going to have all of these autoimmune conditions or these, these, these tricky and complex conditions that are being caused by all these, these things leaking in, which is just sapping your vital energy, it's sapping your metabolic energy, it makes you feel really bad and it makes the healing journey really hard because you feel, you feel bad all the time. But the mucosa is also the home for all of the organisms in your gut. So it's like the house, it's the house for all of your probiotics and your, your beneficial organisms. And there's a very, very intrinsic link between these two. Because if the, if the microbiome isn't healthy and it isn't, it isn't present, this is what rebuilds the mucosa. So you can think of it like these little workers that live in the house alongside your gut. The house gives shelter to the microbiome. So they need the healthy microbiome to be healthy themselves. But the microbiome is what builds the house. So if you've got a problem with either of these problems, you're kind of stuck in a catch-22. So we have to work on restoring the mucosal health and this mucosal health is primarily what stops leaky gut from occurring, but it's also really important in digestion as well. It's how we, we, it's how we break down a lot of the last stages of, um, of, of foods. So, for example, the disaccharide sugars, so um, maltose and lactose, this process is occurring on these brush border enzymes. So if the gut's damaged, we can't bring these foods down anymore. But as I said, even more than that, if the, the mucosa is damaged, the microbiome orchestrates its repair and they have a very, a very intrinsic link and they're very, they're very dependent on each other. Not to say that it just works with this. So the microbiome affects all of these things as well. It regulates motility. It recycles your bile acids. It produces lots of enzymes 
and it removes pathogens from your stomach so you can produce good levels of acid. So the microbiome is a very, very important piece of this puzzle. And this is where you can see it's the foundation and why it's very important. So I, I now want to introduce you and, and welcome you to join us in the Five Pillars course. So you understand why all of these stages are necessary. This is, this is breaking down the core functions of the gut as simply as possible into five, well, technically six simple steps. And the five pillars course is, it's, so there's, there's five classes about, there's one class about each of the pillars. So there's five classes here. There's also a class about the microbiome. So not just how we can support the microbiome to be healthy again, but how the micro, microbiome plays a role on the effects of all of these things and how we can support it. So like I said, I'll give you an example. The microbiome deconjugates and recycles bile acids. So we talk about how we can support the microbiome to do that, which supports the, this pillar, which in turn supports the microbiome. So it's a very um, perpetual cycle. We're doing lots of intricately nuanced things that have multiple layers on top of each other. So it's, you get stuck in this positive feedback loop. So instead of getting stuck in a negative feedback loop here, where the gut's damaged, so we eat foods that we can't digest, they cause autoimmunity, which makes us feel bad, or it damages the gut, so then we can't break our foods down, so we don't get nourished, so we can't recover. We, we break these, these vicious cycles that we're stuck in, and instead, we start building positive feedback loops. So the results build on top of themselves. And once you get stuck in this positive feedback loop, the results just build on themselves because we're supporting them in such a very intricate way. So as I said, the course contains one class about, about each of these. So there's six classes there. And the seventh class is called the big picture. So in this class, it's about taking everything that we've learned. So in here, there's, there's a lot of theory and there's a lot of science. So if you're interested in that, that's, that's really cool. Because this is, this, is, this is very fascinating. Really understanding this problem intricately is the best way to find a solution to it. So this is about intricately helping you understand the problem. But then the big picture, the seventh class, is all about what does it actually look like putting these things into practice on a daily basis? How do we, how do we actually do this? What does a day living in the life of supporting the five pillars look like? And it shows you exactly how to do that. This also includes a question and answer session at the end. We've already had this question and answer session, so you're gonna get access to that with all of the questions that were already asked. This is the second generation of the Leaky Gut Masterclass. So we've already, we've already had one, and we already took loads of questions from it. If you have any questions after this Masterclass, after the Five Pillars um, course, please leave them with us and we'll definitely make sure we get back and answer those questions. So if you're interested in this, you think, okay, Billy, I understand this problem and I see now all of these, these things here are actually solvable problems. If we, can, if we can reduce the permeability of the gut, we can make a lot of this stuff go away. What I, this is, this is the, the foundational premise, the, the ethos behind Health Potion is to reduce unnecessary suffering. And if you are suffering with any of these things as a result of what's going on over here, then I want to be able to facilitate a transformation where this stops being so leaky, which means a lot of this just goes away very rapidly. And in my experience, the best way to do it is with the five pillars. This is, this is exactly where you start. If anybody comes to me with, first of all, any kind of gut problem, I point them right here. And if anybody comes to me with anything on here, so a food sensitivity, autoimmune problem, depression, I'm like, yeah, there, there are lots of other causes to these things. We can talk about higher levels of healing, so mental, emotional, spiritual. But if you don't have a good foundation of physical health, if your gut isn't working for you, if your microbiome isn't working for you, if you haven't set up this positive feedback loop of, of effortless results through implementing these changes, all of that other stuff is like, it's like running uphill. It's like paddling against the current. Whereas if you do this and your physiology is in alignment with you and it's, it's working for you and it's, it's serving you, all of that other stuff, all of those higher levels of healing becomes so much easier. So this is absolutely the place that I point everybody to get started with. It's the introductory class into the academy. So we have got loads more courses in there. Things like how to improve your sleep, how to build a diet around food sensitivities. But all of those courses are built on the information that's provided in here. So this is where I point every single person to start. So if this sounds like something that you're interested in and you really want to pursue this, begin to implement these changes, reduce the permeability of the gut, and as a result, say goodbye to all of these things, all you have to do is click the button that's just below this video. 
that's it. You just click the video and it will take you to instructions that tell you how you can sign up and join the Five Pillars course. It's literally that simple. So just click the button that's below this video and I'll see you on the next page, walk you through the whole process and then see you in the Five Pillars course so we can start getting you some awesome results. So I really hope you found this helpful and interesting. Please leave me any questions and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.